come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. The movie review and talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world, global, planetary. Interstellar. Galactal. Galactal? Oh, I like it. We're making up new words. Galactal. Universal. Domination. (laughs) These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Me. Where'd we go tonight? Well, tonight it's Oscar season. Uh-huh. Literally tonight. Mm-hmm. So obviously we Oscar? had to watch a movie that is has a star studded cast mm, of true. Oscar winners mm-hmm. and is about Killian Murphy creating a bomb. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So clearly you we know, watched. You know what we watched. Yes. We watched Sunshine. You know, yes. none, none of that. <laughs> none of that. Yeah. None yeah. of that got into here. None of it. Sean's wearing this for the first from the time. Oscars, none yeah. of it got into me. I told you. Oh, yeah. It's very strategic. Why I picked this movie? Yes. Okay, <laughs> and right. also so you're the, lining up coordinates and uh, yeah, and uh, internet factors, and you're like, just like the, this plus this will equal the, people listening. The stars literally aligned for us to watch this. Wow! Series. Oh yeah. man! All right, that's that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Okay. Wow! So Oscar yeah. winner Killian Murphy stars mm-hmm. in a movie directed by. Danny Boyle. Mm-hmm. Also an Oscar winner. Yeah. Also, also an Oscar winner. <laughs> yes. Alex yeah. Garland, I think, is an Oscar nominee. Yeah. Yep. And we've and yeah. And Ex Machina. Is it a screenplay Ex, for Ex Machina? I, I think okay. it might have been. I know that Annihilation one. Uh, the, that it, it was a nominator. I don't think. I don't think so. But he also. Uh, uh, well, no, maybe. Uh, well, maybe I thought he was going to be nominated <laughs> for this, but which is a possibility. But it was twenty eight days later nominated for anything. I don't believe oh. so. I don't think so. I could be wrong. This guy is going unrecognized, and it's a fucking well, crime. So yeah. is this a... Well, first of all, what year did this come out? 2007. But it is a product of the merger between Danny Boyle and writer Alec Garland. Alex. Alex Garland. Best so, friends forever. <laughs> so is that where they got... So was their first... Um, their first collaboration was 28 Days Later, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And that kind of kicked off. So it's like, okay. It, it was the beach. Oh, it was the beach. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Right. Yeah. We did the beach. Right. Yeah. The beach was in 2000. About yep. that. Yeah. Everyone forgets about, about the beach. Did yeah, he, he wrote the novel. He wrote How the old book. He wrote the Alex novel. Garland. Be- Dude, I, he, Alex Garland. he looks younger than he, he is. Wait, yeah. Alex Garland wrote the book? Alex Garland wrote the book. Yeah. And then did the screenplay and then got into the movie business thanks to Danny Boyle. That's right. Yep. That's right. We did the beach on this show, and I forgot that we little did factoid. The beach. Well, we didn't. Well, but. yeah. Born in 1970. <laughs> okay, I thought this man was younger than him. Yeah. He so than Alex Garland mm-hmm. has kind of uh, like he's the sci-fi guy, right? I mean, but it's like brainy sci-fi. That's kind of his yeah, niche. Except definitely. Well, Dr- Judge Dread, right? Yes. He write, yeah. Did he Previous direct episode, that? episode? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. He did. He wrote and directed Judge Dread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Did he? Yeah. We yeah, did was that his show, first yeah. movie that he directed? That I don't know. That okay. Could be. I think like that Come was on. the one where he graduated to being actually able to direct as well. Mm-hmm. And no, he, okay, he didn't direct Judge oh, Dredd. Okay. He, he directed, directed Ex Machina, Machina Annihilation, Annihilation, and Men, which I yeah. oh, I did not care for that yeah. movie. But he wrote either. Dredd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't he? Yeah. He, yes. he wrote The yeah. Beach. He wrote 28 Days Later. He wrote The Tesseract. He wrote mm-hmm. Sunshine, Batman yeah. Black and White. Uh, he wrote "Never Let Me Go." I Which forgot is a about good that movie. one. Is that good? Yeah, I liked it. What's, what's that about? Who's in that? It's like time traveling, romance drama, right, some other stuff, sci-fi, Who's obviously going on. So, Ooh. so it's his bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it. Cool. I'm okay. In. So <laughs> I was road dread. Yeah. He wrote "Ex Machina," mm-hmm. "Annihilation." Did mm-hmm. you guys see "Annihilation"? Yeah, you I liked it. I liked that one. But that I was the one that, like, until the the Silver Surfer battle at the end, <laughs> oh, which is what I'm going to label it because I <sighs> third okay. act seems to be a theme yeah. for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, for, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but he's um, 
I don't know. Like, has he eclipsed uh, Danny Boyle? At, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just he didn't even coming. mean to do it. Yeah. Just keep well, him coming. <laughs> I mean, after so Danny Boyle had done uh, twenty days later. He did. Yeah. Uh, well, he train spotting. He did train spotting and, in ninety six. Shallow grave the and beach. Um, mm-hmm. right and before then, this. Yeah, and then the year after this, he did Slumdog Millionaire. Mm-hmm. See, that was okay. So yeah. that like is a key movie for Danny Boyle because I yes. think he needed Slumdog Millionaire if, in 2008. If you were not... <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, if you, but if you were not like a conscious adult in that time when that movie came out, I don't think it can be understated the cultural impact of Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah. That movie reached so far yeah, it did. and yeah. it was like a cultural moment that had the everyone in its grip everyone. for a movie that's n- meh. Like it's fine, it's totally fine, but yeah. it was a moment. But that movie. Yeah. It really like everyone was behind that movie. Yeah, because yeah, everyone. Like, I think people were just like, "Slumdog wins, or we, or we revolt, or riot. yeah, or we yeah. fucking riot." Yeah, because who wants to be a millionaire was such a huge yeah. show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Dev, Dev Patel, Patel was like like his coming first, out like yeah. that's his yeah, first, yeah, his first movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a lot a tracks deal. back to yeah. there, and then uh, I agree. And the movie's just it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Oscar was an Oscar winner. Yeah, it, was, uh, it won. Best it won Best Picture. Yeah, yeah. Did, Jesus. See, yeah. I've been I've yeah. watched it a lot. I remember liking it when it first came out, but I haven't watched it since then. It was very good. Um, and then he went on to do 127 Hours. Yeah, yeah. again oh, another. Yeah. He did Steve Jobs. He did Steve yeah. Jobs in 2015. Steve Jobs. Which is a one good was movie. that? That's Fast the one. Fast one? Bender oh, one. Bender, and that's yeah. a good movie. And th- because that one's really good because it's takes place during three different decades, and the way they shot it. Um, is more in tune with the technology of each decade. Mm. So each different uh, part looks like it came from that era. Okay, that's cool. And no, he it, it's once you dig into that movie, yeah. it's real cool. A okay. real good movie. And dig into the backstory of it. It's very cool. Would you would you uh characterize Danny Boyle as a um heavily stylistic filmmaker until then. a certain decade in his career yes and then it stopped entirely <laughs> what do you mean by have that? you all not seen yesterday the most unhinged movie no. this man's ever made i like yesterday what <laughs> <laughs> the beatles okay. movie yes you the just, beatles the movie where the i'm sorry the me- movie where the beatles don't exist is well, the, the movie, movie where the beatles don't yeah. exist yeah I, I'm. I don't know what to say because that movie's so insane and the fact that danny boyle directed now, why, it makes okay now no why sense. do you think it's insane I, we don't have the time for me to, <laughs> to unpack a why of the, the logic of the movie doesn't make any sense. But the stylistically, it's also a movie where the, it, yeah. like a guy gets knocked in the head and the Beatles don't yeah, exist anymore. Like, I, I don't know just, how much sense you got to. Well, the, it tries something. But the thing is, it's not It's not just that the Beatles don't exist. A lot of things don't exist in that universe and they go through them all and it doesn't make any fucking sense. So the, I hate that movie. I think Anyways. there's a lot you got to let go for that movie. <laughs> was that his most recent movie? I think so. Was the most recent thing that he did. Yeah, because now he's doing TV. That was his last movie because i remember was fucking terrible like he was up for years like there was i think he actually did work on a james bond movie for quite a while and then yeah, right it was supposed they, to be they the new one. him mm. the carrie fukujima one was the one he was working on yeah but it was a whole different movie yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah but that was the one he was attached to for a while and then just yeah um, Creative differences, I believe. Hmm. This movie feels like an Alec Garland movie in hindsight, now that we know more about the personality of Alex, Alex damn it, it of Alex, Alex Garland. Um, right? I'm, or am I wrong there? Does it feel like a Danny Boyle movie or an Alex Garland movie? It feels more movie? like an Alex Garland movie. Yeah, I think so, if yeah. You look at yeah. it specifically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I suppose it's written by him, but I mean, um, okay, so Sunshine, right, has a cast. It has a cast. Wow. Yeah. I guess it's just the way to say it. Uh, it has yeah. a cast. But it is a cast we didn't know we had in 2007. No. Because, That's what yeah. makes it interesting. Yeah, no, because is... watching this for the first time, like a lot of these people, Benedict Wong, like yeah. he wasn't yeah. on my radar. Like this is, you, you got to remember, like Iron Man came out in 08 and that was our first Marvel movie. Right. So Damn. this is pre-Marvel. So And was... then all these people went on to do Marvel movies. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Cause... So what is Chris Evans best known for at this point? Captain America. Not no, yet. No, not yet. Oh, no. Fantastic. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. Have you done no. Fantastic? Four. That he ha- I think yeah. he had done and what the four. Van Wilder movies or whatever those are the um, was that fucking not another teen movie probably he, oh, yeah, which scary is scary movie okay. scary yeah no no, no no not, not another teen, teen movie, movie. You're right, right, right. a great movie yeah, yeah. It's, it's but that's probably movie. what he's best known for or at this my, point, right? my personal favorite cellular oh <laughs> about cellular the yeah. other day Coaster, and I was like go watch cellular yeah 
Dude, because it's actually my list pretty fun. That's been on my list for a while. Yeah, it's a movie, fun movie. That movie's fun. And yeah. you can yeah. go all day long with it's talking about. Dude, yes, we're talking is. about how cellular service works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can have a fucking deep discussion it on that movie. It is pure time capsule, it and I'm is, here for but it. It's all, but it's real good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say that Chris Evans was best known for right. Fantastic, because that's yeah, how yeah. I knew him right, at right. the time, and then he was in this. Mm-hmm. So I guess go through the who's the, who's in the cast. We said Chris mm-hmm. Evans is mm-hmm. in the cast. Chris Evans. Uh, Benedict Wong, mm-hmm. uh, who you know from... Uh, yeah, Killian Murphy. Yeah, that's right. We said yeah. Killian Benedict Murphy's Wong, there. Benedict Wong, who played Wong in... Um, uh, Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, Michelle Kwan is in the movie. Michelle Yeoh. Michelle, Michelle Yeoh. Yeoh. Sorry. Yeah. Michelle, Michelle Yeoh. Kwan's in this? Yeah, right. <laughs> Michelle Yeoh's that's in a, the movie. That's a leap for her. Yeah. yeah Michelle Yeoh, who is an Oscar now winner. Now an Oscar yeah. winner, yeah. right? Last year's Best Picture and Best Actress. Best Actor, yeah. yeah. Damn, mm-hmm. um, she movie was 2001. That's oh a my big, God. That's a big that's gap. That's way to, earlier. Right. Yeah. The perfect yeah. score. Which is about oh them God, stealing, about the, stealing the yeah, ACTs. Let's go to Johansson. Let's go to Johansson. Yes. That's where they, they right. Oh, That's their whole history I right there. I loved that movie. That it's was so in 2004 stupid. along with Cellular. <laughs> Cellular would have been the one he's known for at this point, I think. Yeah. Fantastic Four comes after that as well. So he's, okay. he's doing yeah. it. The one um, where he was the hitman. That came a lot later, I think, right? But that was the, after the he was kept, no, um, he was like the Irishman before it was the Irishman. Wait, he was a, a Chris Evans. He was a hitman? Yeah. What movie? Uh, I can't London? remember. No. Fierce people? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm we... looking too because I'm like, what is this movie? I, oh, that's yeah, the, oh, I don't that's remember the show. that. Yeah. Eh, the paper yeah, but movie. I can't remember the title I don't of it. That. Oh, you don't remember it? I don't remember uh, that. Okay. No. He was in the future. Push? Isn't that that like sci-fi? Oh yeah, thing where well, yeah, like, yeah. He did push. He, he, yeah. Like I'm doing the hand motions. Oh, that's right. The the yeah, was. yeah they, had, was they all had force hands powers. Up. Basically. I forgot about push. Yeah. Push was a oh, thing. Oh my god, yeah. Chris Evans. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's all over the place. What is he doing? Okay. Everything. Everything. Who else is in the movie? We got uh, um, uh, Rose Byrne. Right, a young Rose Byrne because she hadn't been in. Wedding crashes no, at this point, right? Bridesmaids. 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 But no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she hadn't. Let's all not forget Chris Evans in Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Uh, that was there for this. It. It. it is. Yeah. I just want to bring it up. I hate okay. that. <laughs> no, I don't need to talk about because that. Because I believe that Chris Evans is good in whatever he's in. I agree and with that. And he's good in that movie. I love him in that. He is not my problem with that movie. I yeah. mean, that's fine. I was like, he's my least of my worries yeah. in that movie. <laughs> he's fine. Punk no shirt, which is actually a good movie. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways. Oh, yeah, the Ice Man. The I, there you go. The Ice Man was the the, uh, the, the, the movie okay. where he played the killer. I don't know that one. It's a pretty good movie. Um, yeah. Hiroyuki Sonata. What's his yeah. name? Yeah. 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 I've seen that guy in he, a million things. Hiroyuki yeah. He was in the last Sonata, couple seasons yeah. of Lost. Mm-hmm. He's was in again Avengers at a certain point. He's done a lot of stuff. I think he's in. Shogun, the new yeah, FX he is. show. Dude, I yeah. just started watching yes, it. It's good? so good. Is okay. it good? I just yeah. started watching more FX shit because that in Tokyo Vice, people yeah. have been like, you should watch it. Yeah, but he was like, he was the guy in the original ring. Remember yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah, him yeah, in the yeah, ring? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now he's yeah. in like Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's that, good. Yeah. That, dude's, like that dude's cool. He was yeah, in The Last guy. Samurai, right? Like, Yeah. No, no. Not in Memoirs of a Geish. He was in one of those movies that was like a big Western version of a. Last Samurai? Yeah, I think he's in was, Last Samurai was with he in Tom that? Cruise. I thought it's so. been so long since I, I was saw like, that. "Hey, the dudes actually made it to Hollywood." You know, it's been so long since I saw it, but I had a weird phase where I was like obsessed with that movie. Yeah, you know what? This <laughs> one, why. he was in uh, Life. You remember Life? Oh my god, oh, the, the not life. alien alien movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. the Jill one they were the Brian Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. 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 which again, why not? Yeah, let's do it. Everyone, do you remember? I think they reinvented that though because remember when the trailer came out, everyone thought it was a Venom movie. Yeah, like. I think we were all disappointed by hype we built up ourselves. Everyone's, like and the way everyone, it ended, everyone's like, like everyone's the, like, "Oh, it's a secret." Yeah, no, they're like, just movie, not telling us. Yeah. Right. The way the movie ended, though, it's well, don't it's, ruin it for the no, folks. Well, uh, let me just say, it's twenty seconds away from them being able to make an event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. like they, so they, it, they, it was it was a Sony movie. One, right? one right. mouthful of teeth, like and you it's were, a fucking you were right there. Yeah, they could have done it. They should have just done it. They should have just fucking done it. Because what else are you gonna? What what more word of mouth could you? Get yeah, imagine them doing that. So the word of mouth that Split had at the end, that movie yeah. would have had that same. Oh, word. Yeah. Like, oh my god, it's one of these movies. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, oh at my this god. point, just take the swing. They should bring just us in it. as fixers, man. Yeah, See, we could fix these yeah. things. You guys oh. are losing money on every yeah. movie. When, uh, you know, just do it. <laughs> There's there, all. Oh, 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 someone's oh, on the wall. Oh, yeah, somebody's oh. on the wall, and that Is would it be Mark Strong because he's also in this. Yeah. 
Was that who this that was? Just it's so Mark long Strong. These yeah. Now is, okay. uh, is, is Mark Strong the naked man yes. for the rest yeah. of the movie? Yeah. Yes. But does he actually mm-hmm. play that man? I yes. wonder. Mm-hmm. Okay. He just is. Wondering. He's the voice. He's the the picture. He's the dude. He's. Okay. It's Mark See, Strong. I didn't even okay. recognize. Him. I thought because yeah. I thought he sounded like Thomas Crutchman, the German he's, actor. He's, yeah, he's doing the the accent, but no, it's Mark Strong. Yeah, but like, he's oh, not villain. the one that we've introduced to the wall. That no? would be Cliff Curtis. Congratulations, Cliff Curtis. Love that guy. Yeah. I mean, he could be in anything. He's in everything. He, looks he was really in, good uh, in sunglasses. He was in Virus. You remember yeah, when we did oh, Virus? Oh, that's right. Oh, he's in oh. the Meg. He's in the Meg. Yeah. And so Sunshine. I put him on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wall. So he's thank a- you for MF Matt for pointing us out and Holly thank for bringing yeah. Cliff thank Curtis you. to the wall. I think I re- like most recently he sticks in my memory as for Doctor Sleep because yeah. he had such a big role. Yeah, in yeah. but yeah. Yeah. he's I need he's been in. It, you know, throw a dartboard at a movie poster and he's been in it at some point. But he's always like a dependable, he's like, he hasn't, I think, had like a leading role, right? He's no, like he's usually, usually supporting, supporting but yeah. supporting. that's a good place, I think, career-wise. Yes. I'm pretty sure yeah. he's even done like Conan O'Brien sketch bits like I love on that. his show. <laughs> oh, like probably, I'm, like yeah. I'm pretty, he was a recurring character, like I pissed off to it, and yeah. like he's done a lot. Mm. He's a good guy to he's watch. He's like your go-to indigenous actor, it seems like. He's, yeah. he's, 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 it pops. Wasn't he, yeah. was he in Antlers? Oh, Ooh, God, I blocked uh, that movie. Yeah, blocked or was he, because he was too good for that. Years. But I, I mean. Everyone in that watch. movie was, except for the director, was too good for that movie. I know, I was yeah, like, everyone made a mistake yeah. with that movie. That. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Carrie Russell. Carrie Russell, I love her. I love her. Oh, God. He was above that movie. The weird trauma in that movie. Yeah, it's so weird. We're being re-traumatized by Antlers again. And who, well, who else is in Sunshine? We got. We went over everyone, didn't we? We got Cliff Curtis. We've got. Killian Murphy, mm-hmm. Michelle Yeoh, Benedict Wong, Benedict Wong, Rose Byrne, Chris Evans, Mark Strong, Mark Strong, mm-hmm. Troy Garrity. We even okay. The, we even named the writers. So, in the, um, okay, there's there's the one. Troy the Garrity. One? He's the and the, Chip Chung. Who's who? the voice of the uh, voice of Icarus? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the sexy uh, computer so voice. So Troy Garrity. Did you look Troy up Garrity. anything about him? Because he's Troy the Garrity character. Harvey? He's Harvey. He's Harvey, yeah. and I was like, he's the one guy who like never really went on to do oh, anything man. after this movie, right? That like, sucks. I was like, what is he from? I didn't really look. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Troy Garrity is in this movie. And congratulations, sir. No, I just, I just he... looked at the list. I'm like, I don't care about him. <laughs> no, because, yeah, because there's plenty of other, I think, no offense to him, but there's plenty of other actors who can play, I think, that role and roles he would play in other movies. Mm-hmm. He feels what, like a sitcom actor, doesn't he? He, well, uh, he's... <sighs> it, I don't know ten, what he feels like. Ten years earlier, he would have been played by um, Adam Goldberg. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and he's ten a regu- years later, it would have been played like the guy from It or something yeah. like like Which one? Some, the, yeah. the the, one, the like wide eyed one who played um, Eddie Kasprak later on in life. Oh, the James one. Rantone, that Maybe. guy. Yeah, uh, he, he's a on Ballers, so he's doing fine. Okay, okay. He, don't worry about him. I don't. Know what was that on Ballers? <laughs> That's yeah. like Ballers? The, well, it's been on for five seasons, but it's The Rock's TV show. Yeah. So. Oh. Oh, but he's, he's watch- on 47 episodes of Ballers, so he's a regular so character, so he's doing okay. just fine. Right, Don't so worry about Troy Gary. Okay, so, Good for you, but I mean, we're, I guess we're talking about a movie that has like a zeitgeist uh, collection of, I mean, so that's why you brought it. I mean, yeah. it's like all of these people who are in it, you recognize for the yeah. stuff they did afterwards. It's yep. got a writer you recognize for the stuff he yeah. did afterwards. Every person involved in this movie is a heavy hitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So what is the movie about? That's a great question. Uh, Killian we Murphy. fucked this planet up. Yeah, Killian Murphy creates a bomb. We already talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the, um, it's the, the future. The sun, the, is the sun is dying, and there is a group of you know scientists, astronauts that are on a mission to basically set off a bomb in the sun to create the second Big Bang to like. Bring the sun back to life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sounds dangerous. How it the hell really does. are they going to pull this off? That's a great question, Colin. Put a bomb in it. There's a, we, uh, Blow it up. Yeah. What else do we have? We yeah. have nothing else but make yeah. a bomb. So you're saying it's Armageddon except with the sun? Ab- yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. But- I would- except there's no oil rig people. <laughs> right. Yes. I would rather no, watch Armageddon. Actual- Not to say anything negative. These about are this actual. Movie. I would rather watch Armageddon. But yeah. These are actual, like, very good looking scientists. <laughs> yeah. So- no scientists are Not just good looking. Not blue collar space workers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you get them on board a spaceship. Uh, I think, you know, because I guess as you're describing that, I'm like, oh, it's one of. Those movies, yes. like you have seen we have that to save movie, humanity through a space mission. But right. this one has so many fucking caveats and side quests. Holy shit! This yeah. should really just be called fucking horrors in space because it's got it every is. single but kind. I saw My that God. movie. 
What was it? Event Horizon. It was Event Horizon. Yeah. Well, that's what I kept saying. Yeah. I was watching was, I'm like, I want to watch Event Horizon right yeah. now. <laughs> really? So that was the one that came to mind the most with... Uh, when I was yeah. watching well, this? Yes. And I, I haven't s- seen Event Horizon in like 15 years. But Event Horizon comes to mind because the setup also is that there was... This is actually a Icarus 2. A spaceship that went dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was Icarus it. 1 mm-hmm. went first and we lost communication mm-hmm. with it. And so let, this is the backup mission. Let me reiterate that... The crew in this deserves everything they got because they named their spaceship Icarus 2. Yes. <laughs> After their first ship named Icarus went too close to the sun yeah. and, and died. What's, what's, what's the problem with that, Sean? The Icarus 2 irony is so funny to me, too, right? Because it's like they didn't learn their Icarus lesson. The They're like, well, we'll it's just like try Icarus. again. You we'll, know? Do it again. Like, we'll do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the 2 makes it so the, much funnier. That is, it's like, that's the propaganda <laughs> yes. version. It's like, Icarus 2. We'll do it again. Yeah, yeah. They, like That is the, the military propaganda video yeah. they show to these people to hype them up to do this. It mission. should be called Icarus Revenge. Yeah. 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 Sure. It should be called um, it should be called anything but Icarus because but hey, we do not learn and we love folly, so here we go. And there they go. So they're off to the sun in a ship that looks like a needle with a big um like Eyeball. mirror array. Mm-hmm. A contact lens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does yeah. look like a contact lens. And this is it's all got, important to the plot. I was thinking about like what is the science of like how you build this thing because you have to build it straight from the center yep. because you have the sun coming at it from mm-hmm. all angles. Nothing yep. can go out. You're really risking it with your, your communication arrays, which by the way, who designed the communication arrays to like rotate on the very outside of the safetyness of the shield? Yeah. Yep, oh. yep, 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 <laughs> yep. It's, like it's a mission that's designed to not <laughs> have any variance. Well, I was trying whatsoever. to figure out right. It has they, to be the exact math, so specific yeah. and so exact. The math has to be yeah. that to go off course. Just yeah. Like that. But I, I love that about like we have to figure this out and math it out, and like humans can actually do this. We but got then, a science. Of this course, shit, we got according a, to Mark Watney in The Martian. We got a guy in this movie who unfortunately uh, forgets one key because it's a disaster <laughs> movie, and that's how it goes. But I guess I was thinking like so like. They're like, okay, we're going to drop this payload. We have a bomb the size of Manhattan Island. We're going to put that into the sun, right? We're going to create a a second singularity. We have four minutes, right, to get away from the blast radius. Yes. I have my doubts about this. Um, (laughs) But how do you, without the shield... So you, is this your math well, well, they, in it? You no, have to they, like fly they, they, straight from back from the shield. They have four minutes before the rockets start and the thing starts going. Oh, they keep the, the shield. No, no, well, they keep a shield. It's very much smaller, but okay. they have four minutes until the rockets launch it into the sun. Mm-hmm. So okay. they have more time to get away after that. Okay, but so this still, is going to be I'm, uh, with you and your. But doubting. you want to be out of the rocket blast, you know? You don't right. want to be in it. So mm-hmm. yeah. So we meet these various crew members. We've got a captain. We've got a first mate. We have a doctor. Who I think is also a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. We have uh, a psychiatrist who's a little psychotic. So how could you not be? Yeah, this they, is my thing. I the, human brains can't comprehend this shit. That's why we all go mad when we go up there. Like we're yeah. not built for <laughs> right, this. That's, like, what, that, that's yeah. why Ren and Stimby did the Space Madness episode. Is it psychiatrists <laughs> exactly. get into the field because they have like a problem themselves that they're trying to, to I work think, out? Based on this movie, <laughs> I think well, so. This movie. So what? He's not trying to, keep, trying to keep everyone else sane. He's trying to figure shit out. He's like, how can I reach God? Like this, this is what he ends up doing. This is such an old argument. Yeah, yeah. this is the Cliff, <laughs> the Cliff Curtis character. So like what? So this is a reoccurring theme that we have, but mm-hmm. set up how we meet him and what he's like, what his uh, extracurricular activities he are. He is sitting in the observation deck, he's just staring a sunbather, into Colin. the mm-hmm. sun. Mm-hmm. Staring into the majesty. Yeah. The one thing of you're the told sun. from pretty early on in life that mm-hmm. you shouldn't do. Yeah. Don't stare into he's the sun. He's wearing aviators. This man was fine. like, I'm going to get 50,000 miles closer to it and stare into it. Yep. <laughs> like if, that was what he wanted to do. They should have released a um, a special edition of Ray-Bans for this movie. Yeah. 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 Right. right. Talk about. Where was yeah. the tie in there? Yeah. yeah. Yep. But the idea, he explains it as something that's like uh, you feel clean, somehow cleansed, like in your spirit I after doing this. You, you take <laughs> yeah. a, a shower in sunlight. 
or something. And it's yeah, like, that's the cancer forming in your body yeah, from being yeah. as close. Or it's the like, space madness being accelerated. Madness. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I feel it's like your cells changing. It's like that. Yeah. It's like after winter, that first warm day when you go outside and just step <laughs> yeah. in the sun. It's yeah. this, you know what? It's the same. You know feeling. what? I did that. I yeah. did that this yeah. year. That first, cause we had like two weeks where it was just fucking like gray, and then yeah. the first day yeah. of sunshine, I went outside. I was like, ah, yeah. so I understand yeah. this man. Exactly. Like, Take me to the sun. But he's looking at two percent of the sun's strength through the shield. Yeah. At, like you said, right up on it. Like he, yeah. he's like, it's like if you put your eyes right on the TV screen. You know, that's what yeah. this kid's fucking doing. <laughs> yeah. But but it's and like then you he, can look at it for thirty seconds. If well, he can crank <laughs> it up to three percent, three point one percent. Yeah, because four percent would have fucking evaporated. This yeah, yeah. Or burned his retinas. Yeah. Yeah. Three percent for only thirty seconds. Yeah. yeah. Because, like we said, they've been up there for two years. Yeah. And like, some of them yeah. get along and some of them don't. I'd hate all these people if I were them. Oh, my God. Could you imagine having to live with your coworkers for two years? And well, especially nonstop? lunatics yeah. who want to go look at the sun. Yeah. Others are, like, yeah. fighting and, in the hallways. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is, you know, you got, you got this mission. <laughs> Right. Have yeah. to, uh, Danny Boyle was insistent on method acting for this movie. Oh God! And so he, they all went into space. Nope they they were <laughs> to forced, the sun. They were forced to live together for the entire making of this movie, except uh, for Killian now, Murphy. Now, now, so, oh. Killian Murphy was able to go home at the end of the day because his wife was pregnant. Uh, but everyone else uh, lived uh, together. Now, while it's making a convenient this movie. route. Right. It is. Yeah. But now I agree with things like that, yep. and I think that stuff comes across. In a movie, when you do stuff like that, yeah. well, don't do it extremes, and you know I don't want people killing each other, but mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like to build relationships. These people were familiar with each other, right. and for people to be familiar with each other and come across like this, I like that. I'm all yeah. for it. Again, just don't hurt anybody. So <laughs> shut up. There is um, there is a um, because this is, I mean, I guess it has the the structure of a traditional disaster movie, right? Mm-hmm. We're setting it up like it's, it's like the core. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, all of these movies go basically, they follow the same plot, right? Which is, um, we have to go out there and there's a mission that we have to do, but along the way, we're going to confront mechanical failure, yep. external, uh, uh, you know, opposition, and then eventually internal some opposition. kind of internal opposition. Yep. So it like groups them all together and we're like, yep, we know, we've seen it. Um, but what are they going to do here? What is the first thing that foretells of their uh, impending? Uh, problems that they're going to have. What's the first problem they run into? They, uh, get they have so many. A I'm distress like... <laughs> call. Yes. Is that the first problem? I think so, because this sets the movie yes. in motion, basically. Mm-hmm. They receive a distress call as they're mm-hmm. observing Mercury making its loop yeah. around the sun. And they've gone into like a dead zone where Oh, yeah, they get to the dead is, zone like a week been, earlier than yeah. they should have, yeah. Um, and in that process, they're in like Mercury's orbit, mm-hmm. and that has triggered some sort of transmitter signal that wouldn't have been noticed because dead zone. Um, right. You have to be yeah. that close to get it mm-hmm. and no one's. And they've traced it yeah. back that it is actually the SOS of Icarus one. Mm-hmm. You're like, Oh my God. So yeah. are we going to rendezvous with Icarus one? Then there's a bunch of sciencing that has to be done and conversations. Because the thought about- is as important too is that they had what four years worth of oxygen supplies, food, and mm-hmm. but it's been seven years. And so they're like, well, how did that? How did that work? Or yeah. how is someone still sending a distress signal if they right. only had right? You know, like, is there actually someone sending a signal? Right. Have they survived? Mm-hmm. And if they have, like, under what conditions? Right. Like, exactly. right. But yeah. the, I think the major question is, uh, since they see the signal. Do we go there? Mm-hmm. Like right. that's the big question. Our mission is just fly straight it's towards the straight sun, ahead, yes, mm-hmm. and You're blow right. it up. Do we go over mm-hmm. here? But the rationale is, well, we could fail. We with don't this, know with if this what we're going to do yeah. is going to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this could give us a second chance to do it. So but that's that, just a second chance to not work, as far as but, I'm concerned, looking at the logic of this movie. But that, to me, even feels like a leap, a second chance to do it. You're assuming the bomb is completely intact and re- it's still functioning. That, and again, you're assuming but, so again, much. It, right, I mentioned, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Chris Evans, is, that's a lot of assumptions. Yeah. And I agree with him. Yes. Which yeah. is, it must be, it's, as far as character work goes, it must be... A fun, interesting, whatever to to play the character who is kind of opposed to the people you, the characters you like in the movie. But he's fucking right. He's the bullshit buster. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. a lot of times yeah. that's like, the villain or the at least the antagonist. Yeah. You know, it's like in, in the best ones always have like 
But yeah, I can kind of see his point. He's just, you know. I can more than kind of see his point. <laughs> yeah, because well, yeah, yeah. he's not. But you're I wouldn't right, say yeah, he's yeah. a villain. Yeah. No, this no, one, he's no, like he's a foil. A, yeah. But he one. is going to make the right decision even if it means people die. But mm-hmm. it's but you look at it and go, that's the right yeah, decision. He's, he's just he's the one that's a, that's able to look past like a morality thing. Or an emotional. Like, an, or an emotional yeah, connection. Emotional thing. Yeah, yeah like, he's yeah, putting the, the needs of the many above the needs of the few. Exactly. He's doing that like train track decision of three people versus one. He's like, I don't want to be this guy, but we have to be this right. guy right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Killian Murphy is always kind of sold as the star of this movie, is he? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. he's yeah. the, the one with the of, most screen yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess, right? Okay. But they yeah. do do good ensemble work before that. Yeah. He, but he is the and one. And it's, it's his, featured. I mean, it's not. I mean, they're all on the mission, but it's his mission. It's his bomb. He's the one that knows right. how to put it. And he is special yeah. because like, they do allow him special, like, mm-hmm. you're important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More important than the rest of us at certain points. Okay, because I was maybe get, going with, like, are they trying? I mean, aside from the fact that the marketing campaign was kind of focused on him. But if you just look at the movie by itself, it felt to me like it was an ensemble and then when people start dying, you really don't know who might actually make it to the end of the movie. Right. I think yeah. we had that foresight because we saw the poster. Right. Yeah. That's but true. if you look at the movie, it's like the movie kind of, he was almost like in the background mm-hmm. of the first yeah. half of the, you I mean, know. He, is, he is the initial voiceover at the beginning, so <clears throat> we know we know true. it's his story. You got me. He on is. That. And, you know, you that's, I think that's... Um, um, I think the other actors would appreciate that because you can, if your movie's good, if your characters are good, if your story's good, you can thrust those other characters and other actors to the forefront and showcase what they can do in the movie mm-hmm. before you kind of go back onto your main character. Yeah. So it's not just always about what that character is doing. And I think that was, I think that was the strategy behind it. It's like, okay, so. we're going to, we're going to set it up. Like, we're going to make sure, you know, that Killian Murphy's the star, like the, the lead guy, but we want to spend some time with these other characters. Yes. That's why they have him do the voiceover. They have him record the message back home. Mm-hmm. They set up things to like say, this is your final guy. This is him. It's his story, his mission. You have yes. a very good point. I wonder if that voiceover was added in post because they needed to put more focus on him. I don't know. I don't know. But that's, but that's, but that's the, how you would fix that. If you're like, mm, you know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but that's the kind of the unique, um, uh, maybe the advantage of doing one of these movies, a space movie, because even in the movie, each character has a specific science or something yeah. that they're responsible for, they're yeah. good at, and usually in these movies, an element of what they're responsible for will come up that they have to deal with, mm-hmm. and right. so they get a moment to shine, like right. the like the oxygen garden, yeah, with yeah. Michelle Yeoh, yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Although most of her thing is just is just being emotional over it and, and that it that it is I gone. Mean, but do you take care of plants? <laughs> I was gonna say if um my life depended on me keeping house plants alive like these people does, I would last a week, maybe two. Like that's all I got in me, you know. It's, Even succulents like, are just dying left and right. It's incredibly well, stressful to have to keep plants alive. To you have alive. animals, Michaela. Yeah. I, it, those are easier than house plants, my dude. Man, house they, plants are. I think you're busy. right because at least they'll tell you, hey, yeah. I need Food, exactly. I need oxygen, house plants I need are water. Yeah. And house you, plants are just like You know what? You could do everything right and have a house plant for like three or four years and then one day it's just like I'm I'm dying now. I've I've had enough. You yeah, know? I think and it's just like I can't live under these conditions yes. anymore. I'm out of here. Yeah, I think yeah. uh Stop buying house plants, everyone. Like no, I, anyone I, I, who's I just that person is just like, even plant my person. plants died. I'm like, I think you're a better person than that. Like, just stop buying the plants. No, I <laughs> want to be a plant person. No, I want to have a nice house full of plants. <laughs> no, I'll have you know, my plants are thriving. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. They've been alive for many years. And they were on the ship, but until they could die tomorrow. A horrible uh, accident occurs, but they I don't even think that's one of its babies. Yeah, <laughs> that's not even the first accident that happens. You could kill them tomorrow. She's like, well, Michaela killed one. Yeah, you really turned real quick. <laughs> That's not even the first accident that happens in the movie, right? I mean, on their way, they so they make the decision to actually go to well, the... Well, whose decision? Who do they leave it up to? Again, more pointing towards who our main character is. Uh, yeah, I like that they the, the entire crew basically says, well, it's up to you, Killian Murphy, and yeah. just like, stare at him waiting for his decision. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he's the physicist. So mm-hmm. We're making an informed decision here mm-hmm. on whether or not... And he decides that we're going to do it. But of course, in doing so... The first arbitrary problem happens, and that is that the sh- heat shield fails because they've miscalculated the angle 
of uh, arrival. I knew By this was going to ha- degree. I knew this was going to happen. I forgot about this for the thing, but I'm just like, yeah, if they're if uh, if they're veering off course, which means they got instead of going straight, they got to go this way. I'm just like, the fucking heat shield's not going to because the angle is going to be off. And how did he thought forget this? That? Yeah. Oh yeah. How did he forget? How it? did he fucking forget that? I mean, I get we all. He says it in the movie. Human. Yeah. Oh, this is Benedict like, Wong, not yeah, Jeremy yeah, Murphy. Yeah. But, but like, this is the whole mission. This is the mission. Yeah. The, like, the whole mission is to make sure this giant heat shield is in front of you, yeah. so you yes. don't die. Like yeah. You, if nothing else, that is the basic thing you got to make sure of. Like, yep, bro. This is the epitome of you have one job. Yeah. Exactly. And <laughs> you really fucked is. it up. But this, yeah, but again, he, he's getting shit thrown at him that he was not prepared for. He should have been prepared for. He should have thought not of that. prepared yeah, for. Sure. But because um, he said he triple checked all the, uh, the the data points, but this <sighs> does something to his character, right? Mm-hmm. Where he now feeling this immense uh, guilt, yes, um, becomes suicidal and then worse, homicidal, yes, right? Where he's actually going to sabotage the Is ship, he? yeah. He, I, the reason I think that he is is because he over. He, I think you see him you listening to when they determine that the previous ship had been sabotaged yep. by its commander, mm-hmm. which is Mark Strong, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Uh, Benedict Juan is, is seen in that shot, like listening to it, and then apparently sets off like jeopardizing the mission. Uh, do you think that's him who who disconnects the thing? Because I don't think it's him. I think they like said that there was basically he was the only person who could possibly. But the, what we learn before, later, yeah, uh, it was actually Mark Strong. Yeah, I yeah. think it's Mark oh, Strong. I think it was too. Yeah. Yes, I think they, it's Mark yeah. Strong the whole time. Yeah, yeah, it was Mark Strong. I yeah. think. That's yeah, right, I think that's ben, how I read that yes, too. Yeah. I think Ben and Guan is just feeling the guilt from everything yeah. and yeah. does end up doing what he does. But I don't think he would ever continue based on where his character ends up. He would never continue yeah. to sacrifice his crew going forward. Yeah, which is what and what uh, that. Um. Uh, cutting off the connection between ships does. I don't think he'd ever do that. No, that's why the, the moment when they show Benedict Wong um, like overhearing like what's happening and then he like turns to walk away. Yeah. That's not him deciding to sabotage. That's him deciding to go kill himself. Okay. Yeah. He's not going to hurt them anymore. Than no, I don't has. think he would ever choose to hurt anyone no, more Strong based on what he's already now, done. Now that you're saying this, I'm remembering a shot. I think when we're introduced to Mark Strong, uh, surprise shows up, the captain of the Icarus One yeah. reappears in the weirdo third act of this movie, yep. uh, they do show the ship separating. Yeah. yeah. And I guess I read that different. I'm like, did he, cause that's a scene where uh, our heroes have to like fling them throw selves through space yeah. to get to the other. There's always ship. a slingshot in space. Yeah. yeah. Always, yeah. always. And so I thought it was like, me. are they saying that he came over with it? But that's what they were actually. So <laughs> I didn't get that. And I watched it. But you guys did. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank God. Mark Strong, yeah. um, Benedict Juan feels. <laughs> Where would you my, be? My Sitting God here. or your God? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My son Which God. God? <laughs> uh, Go with that. Benedict Wong feels guilty because the captain, which is, uh, what's his name? Is it Hiroki Sonata? No, I'm sorry. Hiroyuki Sonata. Yeah. He and uh, Killian Murphy go out in spacesuits in a protracted sequence where they have to go out and uh, fix some of the panels before the sun, like, rounds it and blasts them into the ether. And this is where the horror starts for me because... (laughs) Oh it God. feels oh, like everything detail. you do in space is stressful and anxiety inducing. Every Nothing single, is easy. Every single thing. Every single thing. Your life depends on you doing correctly. And no pressure. There, yeah. McKinley, there is there there is a there is like, a panel. I don't know how thick, but there is a panel with a couple of bolts separating yes, the spaceman I know. from fucking space. Yep. <laughs> and then Sean, you, but you how are you not fucking ang- like all the, the time. nerves of steel? Yes. Astronauts. This is why they have a training program where, where you got to be made. We would of all flunk out immediately. Right, exactly. You got to be made of some strong shit. <laughs> yeah. To not think about that the entire time. Exactly. It's like, and you can't even take a shit in peace. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's all. Gotta you almost got to suck out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everything is stressful. No, no peace yes. whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and but you, Sean, had a different issue with this scene because you saw Killian Murphy going into the spacesuit, and mm. you were like, "I can't handle the claustrophobia." No, I wouldn't be this. able to. Yeah. I, I I thought about this a lot. It's See, it's only different it, types of horror in this yes, movie. Yes, when watching space <laughs> movies, I wouldn't be able to handle being in a spacesuit and mm. just to have that helmet on. And you got the rebreather. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be able to handle it. 
be yeah. remiss if we did not talk about the spacesuit. Yeah, and what it looked like. Yes, <laughs> it's it, gold. It's um, it's a moon man. It's an MTV moon man, yeah. basically. It is an MTV moon man. It is gold mm-hmm. because they wanted it to be memorable. Yeah, so I remembered it. Well, 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 it, it memorable. It, it also is, it is known as the Kenny. Why? Because Why? it is modeled after Kenny from South Park. Oh, yeah. Ah! That's, it does have the narrow eye window. That makes sense. <laughs> exactly like yeah. Kenny. If you look at Kenny from the side, it's got the same oh, shape. Wow. Yeah, it's now, great. it's gold because um, I got to imagine. It's supposed to be reflective or something. Well, there's the reflect Whatever, but every uh, space mission I've ever seen, the lunar, the LEM, the lunar module, yeah. has that. Um, gold, gold foil, foil. Yeah. Yeah. on it mm-hmm. as you know that thin layer of foil that's supposed to protect everybody that's part of it so they incorporated that into this oh. again the thinness Michaela yes I know it's thin. terrifying <laughs> oh god this movie has so many different horror f- things to be worried about everything it's fucking <laughs> everything's horrible I know I texted my husband when we were watching this because he loves this movie but and he's watched it more recently than me I was like I forgot how fucking scary this movie was <laughs> <laughs> I just remember it being like we gotta drop this bot I remember Armageddon yeah. with yeah, the yeah, sun yeah, is yeah. what I remember yeah. I forgot all all about the crazy third act. So it's all, shit. The, the <laughs> things that we're working on you though are the the, the little breakdowns yeah. and the mm-hmm. claustrophobia. Yeah. The the ship, um I mean it looks I guess like a generic, you know, like uh like space station. Yeah, they yeah. all kind of share, share a yeah, similar yeah. design. There's, it's there's got a, there's those a length like, to it. It's got those are, rounded tunnel hallways. Right, everything's yeah. turning to create gravity. But they have a shit. space scooter. They do have they a scooter, have like a razor yeah. scooter. They ride down the hallways of the space. Yeah, was it? They had like, their own Segway. Yeah. Yeah. was that a thing in, yeah. in 2007? Um, oh man! But at some point, we get to turn do the they, lights uh, off. Do they still exist the did, Segways? No, no. Sorry, but I missed the space scooter. They were riding it down the hallways. Michelle Yeoh was riding it, wasn't she? Yeah. Oh, I must. Scooter. And uh, yeah. I think Killian Murphy had it at one point. Too, oh, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. I think I missed that. Yeah. Okay. You're just riding Space scooter. Yeah. 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 It was great. Pretty funny. <laughs> but we'll turn the lights off and make it all spooky at some point. Of course. And, you know. Um, space power. is fucking dark. You gotta lose power. Well, they have to first dock with the Icarus One, right? Uh, they've decided well, they've, they've to go with the, Icarus, and they've lost the captain. I guess the captain yeah. gets burned up on the outside of the yeah, ship. It's yeah. horrifying. That's yeah. why. I, I wonder why. <sighs> I don't know that he, because well, um, it all depends on the movie, but why not just hide in the panel? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Coming, why not just hide in there yeah. until you can figure some other shit out? Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's I mean, no, there's, I guess it's there's also nothing death. that's going to tell us that he can't do that. The suffocation so. death eventually instead of burning eventually, up. Eventually, but I'm sure they would maybe figure something out or he could crawl through a panel. I don't know. Yeah. It feels like there's an access panel everywhere <laughs> where you could get through this, but well, you know, what do I know? But well, it feels like if if I would instead of turning around to watch the sun melt me, I'd dive in there and just take my chances. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably yeah. what I would do also. Yes. But we've lost our first But it's not, it's not as dramatic. It's not as dramatic. As being This movie is very dramatic. As the yeah, sun yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes mm-hmm. over the horizon and, and the burns wall your of ass. fire like yeah. approaches you and just yeah. <laughs> and you get eaten by a solar flare. <laughs> yep. Um they dock with the Icarus mm-hmm. one. They do. And uh they find the whole thing is covered. I like this it's, detail that's it's covered with dust. It's like eighty percent of out. dust is human skin. Yes. <laughs> they don't know what's like breathe like that in. Of, inches of dust on everything. Inches of dust. Yeah, and this yeah. is also again are, are we all just accepting of this, and I mean like the entire population as a whole, of 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 supposedly smart scientific people going into areas where we know that something bad has happened to previous crews and we are in space and we go in with the minimal amount of protection over no. our no, very frail no. human bodies. <laughs> yeah, this, no, no, this was this was very much a uh, uh, script situation where they're like they can't go in with with too much padding because that doesn't right. that that doesn't help us to the next scene, yeah. which is where yeah. they're gonna need where the, right. Right. where right. yeah 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 you're right you yeah, are right. correct this is a device but also I would <laughs> argue <laughs> we've yeah. ta- we've talked about this team has only planned for this one exact scenario so I'm not yes. surprised they don't have everything they need I mean, that's because very their true. planning has been kind of piss poor but they're all, <laughs> right but they're also yeah. like let's send everybody yeah that is what I didn't understand either like yeah. you would put everybody there okay like, all we, right. more, we took more precautions for COVID on Earth yeah. than we oh. did in space and that's right too they do have another urgency factor because their arboretum has exploded yes. right so mm-hmm. so right. they're like we don't have oxygen we need the mm-hmm. other bomb so we're docking on this ship they get into the ship it's a ghost ship um and then there's 
I just another, want to point out that we never use the other bomb. Yeah, go okay. Ahead. Yeah. So, no, the, the, yeah, that, the whole that, point. This whole thing is pointless, but yeah. Yeah. Right, because I thought dramatically, right, because we're going to end up with Cliff Curtis, like, sacrificing himself so he can jettison the other three guys, uh, you know, out the airlock. Sorry, 2001 Harvey. style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, but that only makes sense. Like if you get something out of like, they didn't get the oxygen. Yeah. They, they got nothing. They got yeah. nothing. This got whole nothing. thing like went nowhere. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the risk. The only they knew that was right. the risk. But the only thing they got was a burnt naked man. <laughs> Yes, they did. Couldn't even grab some of the thriving house plants while they were there. right. Yeah. Try yeah. and grow, regrow a garden yeah. to get you back home. No, nope, right. nothing. Yeah. yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't do that because there's a crisis that we have to deal with. We've only got one spacesuit and three guys. So they wrap themselves in aluminum foil and shoot themselves toward the other he airlock does. that's now floating out in space because mm-hmm. it's been disconnected. So now Chris Evans is the first man to ever just do a spacewalk without a suit and survive. Yeah, at this no, point, no kidding. like imagine Dave if you made it home and you got th- and you got like that on. Yeah. It's like I was in space. You, you would never be the same. Oh, wait, like, no. oh my God. Dave no. had a space shoot, but he didn't have, right? No, he didn't. In 2001, mm-hmm. he got blasted in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, okay. He's, well. he's wrapped in space insulation. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's um, fine. Harvey, right. the Just other Harvey guy. Harvey is not fine. The actor no, Harvey who, is not uh, fine. We don't remember from the movie. Harry Garrity. Mm-hmm. Has, okay. He freezes <laughs> to death in space. And I, there's cool stuff where, like, his you know, arm gets broken off. It does. His little eyes shatter. And yeah. I was just, and I, uh, it's, again, it's been a while since I've seen this, probably when it first came out, but I was just like, I kind of hope insignificantly he just floats off and then just burns up. <laughs> <laughs> burns up in the and sun. He did. Which he did. He goes off the edge. Just, psh, and they yeah. do it. And they knew it's, what they were doing because they do it in a wide yeah, shot to yeah. show the insignificance <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. Little like things an, like that. Like an ant under a magnifying glass. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's fantastic. <laughs> But thank Gone. God that Killian Murphy makes it back to the uh, the mothership. So does Chris Evans. And Chris they, Evans they make does. It back. They both do. He's right? got a little space burn, but other than that, he's, yeah, he's like freezer burn. Mm-hmm. It's and then like frostbite. Is it this point where the movie takes a very strange turn? Yeah. It sure does, Colin. Wow, it and, crazy. What do you mean by strange turn? <laughs> it well, turns into a slasher movie out of nowhere. It Holy does. shit. I mean, I'm all for it. I'm, I wish more movies would do this. <laughs> Surprise me with a hidden slasher movie in your third act. I love it. And he can't die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, how does it turn into a slasher movie? I was wondering what in the hell was going on, to be honest with yeah. you. So yeah. what, 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 oh, because uh, Killian Murphy... Right. There's mm-hmm. a whole thing about how much oxygen that we mm-hmm. have. Right. Because they're basically like, okay, so yes. we can maybe make this mission work. We're not going to make it back, but we can probably make deliver it long enough to, to, to deliver the payload. That's the that's the idea. So Killian Murphy's working on you know space junk, and mm-hmm. um, space math. Yeah, Icarus or you know Friday like mm-hmm. Iron Man style mm-hmm. is talking to him <laughs> and basically says. You don't have enough oxygen to make it to the mission. Oh, you, can you talk about Friday for a minute? Yeah. So basically, the, the entire sec- who, who's yeah. very horny. <laughs> the entire movie yeah. we have Icarus talking to the crew, which is basically Friday, Iron Man's Friday, right? Yes. Like, it's your Alexa. Mm-hmm. It, Right. <laughs> That's what's her name. Turn her off. All right. Because we're about to call her. Yeah. Yep. So she's she's basically a character in this entire movie, mm-hmm. but she's very sexy. Very, very like very the breathy. whole movie, very, she's she's, she's, she's very coming very on to everyone. Yeah, she is coming on to every single person <laughs> in this movie. Mm-hmm. Very breathy. She's like, but, hey, we've been doing this for two years. Well, we're a while. Let's get together. She's yeah. getting the space madness too. She I is. Think so. Yeah. She's like, look. <laughs> she's like, everyone is like. Yes. Like, just yeah. very, like, what do you need from me? Yes, Captain. I can do <laughs> yeah, that's a it, lot right? of yeah, things. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Captain. Yeah. <laughs> she walks in with a martini. Yes, Captain. <laughs> but she tells him green? that they Man, don't have enough They don't have enough oxygen. oxygen. For, and he's like, but there's there's four of us. The math adds up. Yeah. Like, And he's, she's like, this there's not four of you. Great scene. This is a great love scene. It's scene. so creepy. I always love the she's reveal like, of She's like, but there's more. there's five of you. Uh-huh. And he says and he's identity. Like, and yeah. he's like identity, and she's like, he's like unknown. Yeah, he's like, Icarus, yeah. and he, identify. So there's someone else he's like, on the ship. I'm like Icarus, where is where the is fifth it? person? Like on the observation deck. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. so scary. This is good, really good part. I love Killian Murphy's like facial reaction mm-hmm. in this moment because he's just like you can see the fear. Like he's yeah. gonna, he's about to die anyway. Right. right. But now he's just like there is an unknown person on the ship, and that's scarier than the fact that I'm gonna die. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly. And it's really done really well too because there's no. Um, I don't. I don't think there is. There's no music that backs this up. It's just kind of he's dealing with a situation, 
and he, it's just the revelation. No, there's no music to like punch at it and drive it home. Yeah, I I don't really remember if there's a score under this part. I, don't know. I think it's just space. The rest of it's like an industrial. Well, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, basically it? techno. It's John Murphy, the guy who did yeah. Twenty Eight Days Later. But it's yeah. like it's like a, it starts to become a home invasion movie. It, it really does. Yeah, stations, but it's a, is, like, it's, is it a strange like? It, it was just a, a twist, like out of nowhere. Like all of a sudden, it's, it felt like there was a supernatural element. Yeah, yeah. Place. that's the thing. Like because this, I mean, it's Mark Strong is the the fifth person, and they're like, it, like is it? It's it's like he can't die. He's yeah. like this. He's basically walking melanoma at this point. Yeah, he's just like but he survived for seven years. He survived yeah. for seven years, but he's like all burned up. But yeah. like the sun isn't he's affecting been talking him to God as much because he's years. like leather now. So yeah, yeah. it's it's just. It's Very like well, it's like he uh, yeah because it's but because he didn't I don't think he killed everyone else unless he locked him on the observation deck he did fry, and fry did he yeah did he lock him in there and fry them yeah yeah and is that why they're all mm-hmm. had their heads together because they were like we're yeah that die. yeah okay, yeah because, that makes sense because so they knew he, that's what his, yeah. his yeah. plan was yeah. like you know right. we are we are Ash we are going to return to Ash yeah. so he he killed them truly and I then he's why. been living for seven years on the ship mm-hmm. basically just burned which is because he keeps exposing himself to the sun and then his journey driven him mad but yes. the well well i was just gonna, there, so because he killed all of his crewmates he's able to have enough oxygen to last right. and food to last seven mm. years because yeah. remember in the beginning they said well they don't have enough supplies to last seven mm-hmm. years yeah yeah but one yeah, man, man yeah has enough to survive yeah crazy. But so I'm, yeah and i'm i'm not i'm not questioning the he had enough supplies right. to keep him alive i'm questioning the fact that he is like Burnt to a crisp. He's Freddy Krueger. Yeah, he's Freddy yeah. Krueger. Yeah. And well, somehow he over got years. over onto the other ship. I suppose when they docked, and then yeah. you're saying that he, he just snuck on. He yeah. broke the ship. Well, the ship, they yeah. say the door was opened manually on yeah. the Icarus one. It wasn't open through the computer. Yeah. So they were like, "Who did it?" Because none of us opened it manually. But yeah. The way that they shoot him, it's almost like the camera can't stand to look at him it's yeah. like correct he, yeah there's it's like the radiate it's almost like the radiation off of him is affecting the movie camera right yeah, yeah. Because, but i like that yeah because they they wanted it to be like how like how you can't look directly at the sun mm-hmm. that's what he's become at this basically point. yes yeah i like that mm-hmm. and i mean to be honest the first time i watched it like when i was watching it tonight i'm like i couldn't remember the identity of that person Mm -hmm. and then tonight it's like okay i guess it does actually say it's the (laughs) captain of the other ship who somehow like all of a sudden come out of nowhere and is now present in the movie Mm -hmm. and then he's crazy and so he's gonna go walking around trying to kill everybody else i think he kills michelle yo and Does then he, uh, he, with the uh, motorized scalpel yeah right? which is basically like uh, an electric carving knife basically. for people yeah, that's how yeah. she meets her demise yeah. and then he uh, stalks rose burn in the dark yes right yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. doesn't he break through a wall to get her yeah he there was a whole bunch of crazy think, shit happening well, there yeah because it's, that's when um chris Ev- at the same time chris evans is putting the mainframe back online i love that we got like the mainframe is out of the water yeah. like the fact that we still just yeah. point to the mainframe as the problem. He's got to put it in the coolant. He's got to put it back in the coolant. But yeah. as he's doing this, lights and shit are coming back on. And I think at this yeah. point, the lights come back on. Shock Mark Strong. And so he attacks the first thing that looks like a human, which is actually the corpse of a Benedict, Benedict Wong, Wong. Yeah. as he breaks through the glass. Oh, and then, and then she him. stabs him. Yes. Gotcha. I thought it was also the holographic room or whatever where... It, it, it is. They, it is I like because the, birds were flying. The holographic room is like a therapy device yes. for the yeah. doctor I want to try this. I do too. I like, yeah. This seems like amazing I, I put on an yeah. Oculus 3 this mm-hmm. weekend. Basically the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Fucking. Uh, there's a lot, I don't. I don't. Crazy. Wanna, I don't want to buy one. I just want to go to my therapist's office and sit down, yeah. put one on for an hour, and go home. Are, you know? Right. Yeah, that's that's right. Like if they aren't doing it, therapists should do this. Yeah, yeah. they but should. I, I'm, you, hear you know, what? I might look up <laughs> because yeah. I think this should be a part of therapy, and I'll bet it is somewhere. Right. Yeah. But that should be. A I part mean, of is, is that is that an element of Oculus that they have like a like a therapy app? Well, that's what we're saying. Yeah. If they don't. They should I come think, up I with think it. the uh, technology would lend itself to doing something yeah. similar to this yeah. and where you are encased in mm-hmm. this whole thing. Because, um, I mean, I don't know what games you you participated in. They don't seem very calming. Yeah. So. No. Uh, no, <laughs> mine, mine, no. The roller mine, coaster? Mine, no, mine was, a, it, that, the mine was the sword and sorcery where oh, you nice. just stab a lot of people. Yeah, so, yeah, no, not yeah. comforting or calming no. or anything. Well, but, just you said it's exactly that like that. So, I was like, but oh. It, no, well. but, it, but it gets you into uh, um, a kind of an atmosphere where you are disconnected from everything else. And so you are, you know, left to what mm-hmm. you're seeing around you, which 
could right. lend itself to mm-hmm. more to calming, I mean, yeah. more yeah. calming elements yeah. rather than shooting things if and there isn't things ar- up. If there isn't already some sort of like meditative app for that, there yeah. definitely needs. I to think be. yeah, I'll bet there is. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, you need more to research that. to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I remember the so there we we leave so like I think at at some point in the movie I was not sure what had happened to Rose Byrne. Because we, yeah, I lost her too. Yeah, we mm-hmm. we just kind of lost that plot thread and I because think the movie became is, a bigger one, which yeah. is we have to deliver the payload. Mm-hmm. And Chris Evans sacrifices himself by going down in the coolant, freezing to death. Basically, mm-hmm. he gets caught yes. and then you know freezes yeah. to death. So Killian Murphy, it's up to him to actually don a space suit and uh, eject the the bomb into the sun. He's gonna eject Correct. the warp core. Yeah. Yeah. And so that becomes like a huge thing, because uh, I mean that's like ten minutes of the running time, right? Where he has to yeah, flip a bunch of switches. He's, and, yeah, well, he's got to do yeah. that. He's got to do the switches, and then he's got to like get over back to the payload to the bomb that's going yeah. to the sun. It's a whole process to it. This is the this is Ripley shutting down and preparing. Yeah, and get up and get, yeah, because yes. you also have to get clear of the blast radius mm-hmm. of the thing, and so then well, he, well gets cl- he gets clear of it to blow up. And he gets clear of the blast radius of the remaining ship that gets destroyed yeah, the rock yeah. sunlight. Yeah, yeah. No, he's gonna die. Like at what point Yeah, he's not avoiding. At what point did you realize that like all right, everyone's just gonna die? Pretty early in this movie. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like we, we, you can I think you can watch a movie like this and be like, all right, they might survive. But uh, I, I think, think it, in, I yeah. think in this, there's a certain point where you're like, all right, nobody's going to live. Most of the time. But I think earlier on, like you said, you'd be like, nobody's going to live. In most this, sci-fi movies, if someone's sending a recorded message to their loved one about, hey, if we make it, they're not going to make yeah. it. Yeah. That's it, smart. Right, especially if they're like, if you see a particularly beautiful day like that, if someone says that, that is the voiceover to the beautiful day later on when they are dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you and think about that? I mean, years away from Earth, they're yeah. not coming back. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because all the disasters are happening. But I mean, we've seen movies where there is some kind of, you know, yeah, like, fucking uh, Sandra Bullock made it back to Earth. Yeah. The abyss. There was aliens brought them up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that- um, but this one is on a terminal <laughs> kick, right? So the idea is <laughs> that they are sacrificing themselves for the greater good. That's like hammered right. home over and over again. It is, because they knew that kind of at the beginning. Chris Evans brings it up, like you said, hammers it home. Yeah, yeah. we're expendable, and so this is like it's, it's, it's all for nothing. It's because... Um, uh, all or nothing, sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Alex Garland, when he came up with the concept for this movie, it was the idea that came to his mind is if the fate of the world was literally up to one man, what would that do to his head? Mm -hmm. And that was the idea that like sparked the entire movie. So that was kind of the driving force of Mm -hmm. everyone's motivation in this. It was, you know, why Mark Strong goes crazy, why Killian Murphy is like heroic. It's everyone's motivation is different, but it all comes back to that thought. Hmm. If, wow. If everything depended on you, Look around and look at everything yeah. on this. What earth. would that do to you? But, well, yeah, if, but if that was, if you could make the decision that would it save is, it, it's the ultimate best worst case scenario because best case scenario, you're like the fucking hero of the universe. You'll be dead. <laughs> worst likely. case scenario, you're dead and everyone else is dead. Now right. all your like, problems are most solved, likely so, you're going to yeah. be dead no matter what. So you and die so here, or you, or nobody knows it even happened. Oof. Because no one exists anymore. So it's really, you know, <laughs> there's no accountability for what happens no matter what you do. So, you know. And then I mean, I mean, that's why Chris Evans, free. that's why Chris Evans is so like willing to kill Benedict Wong. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he has that yeah, kind of kill him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, He's just like, it, I'll do it. It's just kind yeah. of amazing to look at like humanity in that way. Has it helped because of the movie that you just watched? Kind of giving you a perspective. <laughs> I just, I, I can, I, I like the idea because I can see how it would fuck with anyone's head. Oh yeah, it would yeah, fuck yeah, with absolutely. anyone's head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, That's why I'm like, man, I, I admire the men and women that go to space because yeah. they have a mental toughness that yeah, I can't. I mean, they know on. that they. Yeah. You know, this is. Did Natalie Portman do a movie where she comes back from space? Oh yeah, Lucy kinda... in the Sky. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that was yeah. one with yeah. John Hammond and everything. Yeah, yeah. Where the craziness and everything, <laughs> yeah. like. 
How could you not? How could you yeah. not be crazy? How could you like, not be in the vastness of blackness, look down on Earth, <laughs> and, just, and come back the same? Uh, you can't. You gotta have an ego too, right? I would. Oh my you god, definitely have to. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh yeah. Anybody who goes space. How many I've people have done it? Space. Yeah. Oh, no. everyone, they all yeah. have an ego yeah. because they're guys, all. That's all. If part you guys of have it. watched any videos of Buzz Aldrin? Oh yeah. Right, yeah. Oh yeah. Seen I love when he heckles movies that aren't accurate. That's my favorite. Did you see that movie Ad Astra with? Yes, I like it. Yeah, like a similar. Yes. Feel to this. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because that has some true horrifying segments in it too. Yeah, kind of come out. It of does. Disasters. But that's a whole, that's, that. that's a daddy issue movie. But yeah, but, yeah, also it is. Does, but there's uh, there's also yeah a lot of silent space stuff mm-hmm. where you just like that guy's got to deal with a lot of shit and mm-hmm. what he's trying to do. And yeah. yeah, but it's also the previous mission we have to go right, right? because yeah. the first one went wrong and yeah, some guys trapped yeah. up there going crazy. Oh yeah, yeah I forgot about the moon chasing. Yeah. I haven't yeah. watched that movie in a while. Yeah. I, I think know, that movie. I need to watch it, that that movie again. is more. It's an odyssey more than a disaster. Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is an event. That is yeah, a journey. Yeah, we have to get there, mm-hmm. but it yes. has a less uh, terminal kick to it. Right. Um, it doesn't mean as much. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the end of this, um, right. Killian Murphy does not survive the movie, but no. we have but we, to bring have, him back so there's a confrontation with the, the bad guy. Yeah, but we have that moment that he talks about. Um, Rose Byrne earlier in the movie asked him if he was afraid. Mm-hmm. of his mission and he explained how the bomb is designed to create the second big bang basically and how beautiful it's going to be and mm-hmm. he's like in that moment it's just going to be beautiful and no i'm not afraid of that mm-hmm. um and so, so in the we end get, we get that moment yeah he puts his hand into the wall of fire and does. And and there's sparkly. there's I, the third there's a lot of third act weirdness yeah. i was like but before that we get the confrontation where mark strong gets his arm ripped off yeah or in the skin no, he, skin gets, of he, his get, arm. No, he gets degloved yeah. 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 so yeah. so he gets off the arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the sound design on it like ripping was yeah. really gross but we're also in kind of a weird atmosphere at this point yep. because we're in the payload but we're also dealing with a weird gravity in which people yep. get thrown over edges but also slow down and are able to stand yeah. up on and opposite it's shot sides of very weird. It's yes. weird. Yeah. It's a yeah. weird ending. We, it's, the like camera's you, flipping all over the place. Right. The angles you are really all. You really got to be with the previous parts of the movie to be okay with this part of the movie, I yeah. think. Because they there get was weird here. Some of it, like Rose Byrne tackling uh, Mark Strong, yeah. was I was able to follow it because of the audio design more right. than the picture that i was yeah. saying if that makes any sense yeah yeah because we're in a cube within a cube and yeah. it's just like and they specifically never show mark strong head on it's yeah always or it's all disorienting yeah. yeah yes very disorienting i would him. say that I, I much like of it. the movie is disorienting it sure is. uh yes. through its uh, choice of either danny boyle or the cinematographer yeah. Yeah. But i don't know um but in the end so they all go boom we the get bomb that, goes off. Right. We do get that beauty where he is at the wall. Everything's sparkly and it's pretty. Yeah, and then we see his sister back on Earth, but Earth hey, is, uh, is, is... It's in, yeah. it's in permafrost. Yeah. But Sydney, Australia we, is frozen. Yep. Yeah, but we see the sunrise, and then we really see the sunrise. Mm-hmm. It's like if you see the sun shining on a particularly beautiful day. Whoosh. So it's they a happy have, ending. They could have lined up that VO a little better yeah. for the well, for a better punch at the ending, but whatever. They they did it. I mean, right. Then we assume that it worked. Saved yeah. humanity. Seems yeah. like a pretty Saved happy humanity. ending to me. That's like, a happy yeah. ending. Yeah. yeah. They mission, do the risk. Mission complete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they did, did what it. Icarus One couldn't, so right. yeah. And <laughs> but again, nothing. <laughs> they still flew nothing too close mattered. to the sun like and burned up. They are still Icarus, you know. Like, <laughs> like doing going off course didn't do anything for them. It, it fucked up a lot in their course yeah. to doing this. Narratively, yes. you're saying, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is also like, what happened in Alien Covenant. Don't go off course, my guy. Just don't just go don't off course. Do yeah, but I think narratively, don't you have to? For maybe it's a problem that I have with the movie. It's like it feels like you have to gain something that the other guy sacrifices himself for. You can't make it all like uh, nothing came out of it. And narratively it's irrelevant almost to the movie. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, then it becomes an, an arbitrary uh, crisis. I'm, I'm totally fine with the crisis being conflicts within the people in this bottle situation. I don't yeah. need external forces. Right. Yeah. 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 So to me, there's enough to mine there just from people being shoved in together. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 
Okay, well, we'll, we'll go, we will go around the table and tell you individually whether you should watch this movie. No, whether more we, talk. We would recommend <laughs> okay, it. Okay. But first, well, we're, there is going to be more talk because we're going to get talked to by our listeners. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to get talking to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, Sometimes we do. It happens. But to do that, we're going to have to read some of your mail, and that means we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. Do you think he's been to the that close to the sun? I mean, clearly he's got space madness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's definitely Mm -hmm. a space madness. Yeah. For Just sure. listen to him. He's got space. Mm-hmm. Just listen to him. He hasn't said a see, word. But that's, but that's, eleven. Oh, he said a few words. He said the same words for the past eleven years. You're right. He does have space madness. That's, that's all he can say. He has space madness, but he's never been to space. Yeah, that's yeah. the trick. <laughs> um, well, we should let the good folks Dude, at like home. Bits, okay, there's uh, there's a dark version of that where like bits and pieces of space. <laughs> oh. he's part, ooh, it's a dark, like I said, it's a dark version yeah. of it. Never mind. Um, this is how you can get a hold of us and participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On X. At Sad Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram threads at Saturday Night Freak Show and follow along they did. Oh. Michael Whitaker writes in about Sunshine and says, I hear it's a great movie, and at the same time, I was super keen on seeing it. I was a huge 28 Days Later fan, so I was planning on seeing it simply because it's a Danny Boyle film, but somehow I just sort of lost my momentum, and it never actually, I never actually bothered. <laughs> I feel like you're not alone. Wow. You're not so alone. You heard what you were doing, and you're just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of those movies that you see the poster, and you think you get it. And so you don't think you mm-hmm. need to see it? Does that make sense? Yeah, like, oh, sure. sure because got, yeah. I think you can probably guess what's going to happen. Yes. But it's also about like the you can't guess that minutia, third act, the, in- yeah. the intricacies, the people, and all. Like if you got a good guess, it's all about that. Richard Crotzer says, "Awesome choice, gang. This is a great flick. Danny Boyle was on such a streak of great films. It reminded me of a serious, real world vis- version of Event Horizon and Alien, Sphere, and The Abyss." In my head canon, I like to think that Killian Murphy's character is a descendant of Oppenheimer because of their very specific <laughs> skill set. There you go. I love it. I like that. There you go. It works right for Holly. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Scanners, oh, and yeah. Bree's Thoughts oh. writes in oh. and says, I love Michael Ironside, who's in the movie. We yeah. all do. We all do. And uh, she says, in the 80s, he was the ultimate bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, so, he was. He's got that face, man. He was. Yep, he's got that face. He's got that intensity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, about the scene in Scanners that everybody knows where the head explodes. Mm-hmm. Mike Welch says on the Flash TV series, they recreated this with Michael Ironside. Oh my God, that's oh, so awesome. What? I'm going to Lo- find I was going to say, yeah. looking that one up yeah. as soon as we leave so here tonight, cool. that's great. I, wonder how I doubt it was as bloody I, I wonder how excited he was when he found out he was going to get to do that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. He had to have been so He's stoked. probably all through his he, career. He may, you know what? Maybe he wasn't, but I'm sure everyone around him was. <laughs> like, oh, should we get to do this with Mike, Michael Ironside? Hell yeah. Uh, Travis Legler uh, talks to, I think it was Michaela's point, about psychic boy. Scanners psychic, is a psychic, psychic boy, boy movie. movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's a rare thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he said the first one I think of is The Shining. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That might be the psychic boy movie. Right, he had a list of a few things. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, yes, Anthony yeah. Fremont in the Twilight Zone, the movie. He's the one who right. yeah. yeah. sent the people to the cornfield. Yeah, and shit. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Joey in Making Contact and Sid in Looper. Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. But I think that I bring up the the the, the Fury was the movie. The Fury, like, yeah, right we talked about that Patrick. Time. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, and Patrick. And Patrick yeah. Yes. Um, well, thank you all for writing in. We really appreciate it. We do. We love hearing from you. Yes. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not you should watch tonight's movie, Sunshine, starting with Michaela. Okay. <laughs> right. You were really thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, I had to think. I'm like, who? Because I can't go to Holly. I don't want to do it. Okay. I'm going to Michaela. All right. I, um, so, I, yeah, I had seen this like when it first came out. And I actually remember when this movie came out, it was one of the first movies to come out on Blu-ray. 
and a lot of like HD TVs that, HD, HD it was DVD. it was both but you got one free with uh, the purchase of an HD uh, TV uh, like they would this is like the movie they gave you because they're like look how beautiful it looks because it's oh, right, right. Sure. so yeah, much yeah, like, that was yeah, good yeah, like visual effects porn in this movie so like yeah. it's a good way to sell a TV and know? they really did because yeah. they're just like we're gonna pan past the space station yes. so many times <laughs> do you remember yeah. the first movie you watched on Blu-ray no. Oh. Mine was Finding Nemo. Oh, <laughs> mine was 300, I think. Oh, that was one of the that first ones. for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was one of the early ones. Transformers. Too. It was one of those yeah. two, I think. Finding yeah. Nemo was really pretty, though. <laughs> Let me give it that. But yeah, it. <laughs> Like so, that's how I always remember it. Is like, yeah, it's really stunning visual effects. I definitely remember it more as Armageddon with the sun. And for some reason, okay, I I realized that this movie would be a good companion piece with Duncan Jones' Moon, which is a movie I've been meaning to oh, bring to yeah. the freak show for a long time. Yeah. But I realized I confused plot points of Moon with this movie. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. But because like for some reason, I like thought Killian Murphy was more isolated in this movie. But that's that's Sam Moon. Rockwell and Moon. Yeah, yeah. And um, but I think they're good companion piece movies together. Yeah. And they both Sun and Moon. Yep. <laughs> And the one, man, if you want to get me like emotionally tugging at my heartstrings immediately in a sci-fi movie, make them record a message home to their oh family. God, yeah. it, like Interstellar fucking right. cry. It's going to break like, you up. Yeah. It's going to break them up. Yep. Like everyone's going to be emotional. I'm a, emotionally this. invested. That scene in Interstellar where he watches like the seven oh, years of oh, yeah. his kids is just devastating. Yeah. Um, so I love that. And yeah. I, I'd never get tired of seeing that. I think the effects still look really good, especially for yeah, being like 17 years yes, old. Everything looked good. It looks Even really like good. the way the UI and like screens are designed still pretty much holds up like it doesn't look dated at all no even though it is pulling a lot it feels like um like alien but it's also that specific like spaceship setup yeah from there um no i i danny boyle like he's got some real hits and real misses like some i I, sometimes i don't understand what the point he's trying to make with his movies (laughs) Mm -hmm. is it seems unclear um but i do really enjoy this one and i do feel like it's mostly gotten forgotten about because people like i said look at it and they're like Armageddon, I got it. Like, I don't need it. But, I I mean, man, this cast is stacked. The effects look good. The story is good. There's, it was stressing me out at several points watching yeah. this movie. I could feel like my yeah. heart rate getting up. is so many different types of horror. So um, I would definitely recommend it. I think it's worth a watch, especially if you haven't seen it for a while, because you've probably forgotten a lot of it. So, Colin, what did you think? Um, there was, I guess we haven't really talked about it, but the style of this movie uh, is exceptionally, I thought, disorienting. Yeah, Um, definitely. There was a lot of scenes where Danny Boyle would cover it from multiple angles. So you'd be on a a shot of a, a, a character cut away to something and come back to a different angle of the character. And I'm like, where are we? I was constantly going like i don't know where i am in the movie or in the space uh because they do like a, a, an angle that was over the character's head looking down at them cut to something from the ground it was always doing like uh i guess they were trying to be i don't know not avant-garde that's bad bad word but you know I mean, like, they were trying to make you disoriented because the characters are disoriented well yeah. it worked that, it was disorienting uh, yeah. but in a way that was off-putting to mm-hmm. me like i couldn't follow visually mm-hmm. where we were at any it given did, scene it and yeah. it was just it moments, felt yes. like it compounded because then he's like okay then we're gonna use lens flares and we're gonna distort the image and we're gonna have multiple images mm-hmm. and we're gonna have flash frames and it was just, I thought, a, an ugly experience to actually watch it. Yes, there's great special effects and vistas in there, mm-hmm. but it's like the whole movie is just, uh, okay. So I, I couldn't really follow where we were. So I'm like, okay, we got the story. And then it did seem like you have kind of a boilerplate template space disaster movie i'm like okay but this is danny boyle doing it you know and then his style like completely turned me off the crises just felt like all right and then yep i've seen this here's the crises that we have to deal with the crisis at hand you know and then when the i think the cardinal sin was that we're going to spend all this time on a like um uh, the Star Wars uh, Last uh, Jedi also did this, where we have a mission that we have to go on, Casino and we got to get back. Yeah, no, the the whatever the warp drive thing. Oh, that, like yeah. we got to go over there, and like that never gets resolved. Yeah. They don't actually succeed. Oh, wait, oh yeah, the Benicio del Toro storyline. Where <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to get the key them. from the key master to go right. to them. Like Canto Bite also yeah, doesn't help. That doesn't help either. Yeah. But I got a lot of that from this, oh, where good. I was like, this doesn't. 
matter at all. Interesting. Um, ultimately, I thought it was a bad movie. I'm like, I was sitting wow. there going like, when. Um, so you, A-list. so you think a side quest in a movie has to have an end result in order for it to matter to the plot? I mean, I I'm, think it has I'm to contribute them, but... to. Because I mean, um, I don't know. I I feel like a failed mission is it makes sense in this movie if they learn something from it, or if they were able to get something from it, it would make. Uh, they did get something Cliff from it. They got Curtis's, Mark Strong from well, it. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> But See, that, that doesn't necessarily that, just that came, doesn't have to happen though. to me. That came out of nowhere, where all of a it sudden we have nowhere, like yeah. uh, you know, like in the third act, we have a new bad guy. Especially it just when kinda, it does, it felt like he was introduced right. into the. And when that feels more supernatural than anything else, it kind of takes away from. What, I thought he was powered by what, the sun, right? What, right, but it doesn't kind of coalesce with what everything that's come before. Yeah, yeah. So it Where's felt more like scientific, a, and then we get into that. And because it, it felt like we went disaster, 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 and then all of a sudden there's this guy who's like, you know, for all intents and purposes, possessed by the power of the sun, wandering around like, you know, because he's on a mission maybe from... Maybe if Cliff... Was it Cliff Roberts? What's his name? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe if that Cliff character... Curtis. Cliff, Cliff Curtis. Cliff Curtis, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, maybe if Cliff Curtis had stayed around for a while, because it feels like Cliff Curtis was getting to the point... That the that Mark Strong was getting to because if you notice over the movie, yeah, he starts he slowly, to get sunburned. He gets sunburned. He's like focusing on the sun and everything. Yeah. Like maybe if we'd had a character that was getting closer yeah, to what I the captain felt. If he was the character who went nuts at the end of the movie, that would have felt more organic to the mm-hmm. story. Probably because that's what it felt yeah. like. They may have been going. Yeah. Yes. Or if he had something, so he sacrificed himself for something. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It just right. felt like that character. Yeah, yeah. That kind of detour. I guess I, mm-hmm. you know. I don't like if you don't like pay it off in anything and you say like, well, what? But that's a structural right, thing. Right, so right, it right. felt like a bad movie made by two very talented people. I know I didn't like men either. I thought I that was like kind it. of a mm-hmm. misstep for. Mm-hmm. But I know that uh, after that, I was like, because I saw it after 28 mm-hmm. days later. And you're like, you know, I want to see what these guys do next. And then it was like, Ugh. and then <laughs> you know the fact that Danny Boyle did have uh, uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, it's a good thing because I'm like, these guys <laughs> yeah. are never working again. Needed and I'm surprised that Alec Garland got. Well, I guess he had to, you know, he wrote more scripts and got, you know, or Alex. So yes, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> congratulations. But yeah, I would, I would, I would pass on this movie. Sean, what would you uh, think? Okay, wow. It's a lot to think about between those two right there. <laughs> no, but it is I understand what you're saying, Colin. Hmm. I still like the movie. Now we do get uh, a certain circumstances. I mean, it is the space disaster movie with uh, a um, uh, a goal that obviously you know that may be obvious for this crew to go for. I, don't know. I still I I think I still liked it. I still liked it a lot because I like the actors in the roles dealing with these situations. And I think that might be the biggest selling point for this movie is that the cast is really good. Well, you really know who good. they are after now. Right, like, right. But, know, I, but that, I think that, that is, is, selling, like, is yeah. one, of the, one of the bigger selling points. Like, even if it wasn't when it came out, it is now. Mm. Um, and I like seeing these actors dealing with those with this whole situation again it's it is something we've seen before um and it, and that third act does get again like you said a little weird because again we do it's not exactly supernatural but it does feel like that element is coming in that third act where we're in the cube on the payload uh, scientifically based on the rest of the movie doesn't quite make sense with what everyone said everyone should be dead by the point that we get on the payload. Like, uh, Killian Murphy should have attached himself to the payload going into the sun, and he should have ridden it into the sun, <laughs> and that really should have been it. Like, I really thought, maybe I think that's it. Like, once he, like, grabbed onto that, I thought, oh, this thing goes into the sun and blows up, and then that's it. I didn't realize that he had more to do getting into that and setting off the chain reaction and all of that stuff. That may have been too much at that point. Just to see him, like Slim Pickens, just to see him get on that thing and ride it into the sun, I think may have, or maybe should have been the yeah. ending for it to save humanity. Yeah. You know, whipping his cowboy hat and everything. I it's think the that, same, the character arc goes the same way. Yeah, you know? I think so. Um, and again, we do get a little supernatural with Mark Strong having survived seven years and, and ending up causing havoc on this ship. 
Um, but I think I, I like the cast a lot. Um, I think this, uh, if nothing else, this movie will give you a lot to think about and a lot to discuss. Like, I think there's a <laughs> lot in this movie. A lot to unpack. I, it is. There's a lot to unpack. And I think it makes it very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll recommend the movie. Yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff in this. Again, there's certain story elements that you will recognize. And obviously, we have to save humanity by setting off a bomb that will save everything. And, you know, that maybe that plot device can get a little old. Um for this one, I, I still like it and I still uh, I still recommend it. I still think this is, yeah, this is a good movie. And I like the actors in this movie. Mm. There's a lot of good ones in there. Yeah, I'll recommend it. Uh, who got um, Holly, you taking us home? Is that it? Mm-hmm. All right, I Holly. Am, I'm completing the mission. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> dock <so>. us. <laughs> Let's dock, Holly. Uh, yeah, I am I like this movie. I think it's, uh, I, I agree with your points. I think yes. the third act is very problematic. I think that there's some major writing flaws that could have been tweaked to make it a little more palatable as far as story goes. Um, but I, I like the characters. I... I do. I not just because we know who they all are, but I like the acting in this movie. I think everyone does a really good job. Um, and they're all pretty much making good points. Where you're just yeah, like, hey, I'm yeah. Good. I'm I'm like I'm like. Well, he's not wrong. Well, I agree with him. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> like I'm I'm with it. I I like I like the content. I like the storyline. I wonder um, how us four would be as a crew in space oh trying God. to figure shit out. We'd be like, damn it, Sean. Because I'm a scientist, I know the thing about the, there's a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> we would all be dead so fast. So very fast. So fast. Very fast. Um, there would have to be a, a bunch more crew besides I'm, us. To keep this we would all going. be dead. I'd be dead before we left Earth. Um, <laughs> So yeah, no, like I, Michaela made some points. Like the the visual effects really do hold up pretty well. Like yeah. it looks really good for for a two thousand seven movie. I think it 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 works really well still. Um, I I I like there's <laughs> so there was actually a subplot uh, with Killian Murphy and Rose Byrne being romantically linked, and Danny Boyle cut it. Um, and I loved his reasoning. He said. There's not much room for comedy or sex every when everything is waiting to destroy you. Yeah. And I was like, true. you're a smart man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank it you for that. It still comes through. Yeah, like like you get that they're close. There's a relationship. You get that they're close, yeah. but that's all you need. We don't need a, a romantic subplot. Like, it's fine. No, if a sex scene had happened, I'd be like, what? Uh, okay. Yeah, we no, have other things been, to worry it about. It would have been completely out of place. Just yeah. like there was only like a few like short jokes in this movie because it just it wasn't the movie for that. Um, so I liked his choices uh, as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, I, I like this movie. I think it's entertaining. It's it's not necessarily anything that we haven't seen before, but I like what they do with it, uh, despite the problematic third act, because it definitely is problematic. Yeah, I think the third act is, um, yeah. would get many people. I, I agree with what you're saying, that it if it had been, um, if it had been Searle going through, yeah. like becoming more like Mark Strong, that would have made more sense than weird like serial killer mark strong showing up it, w- it was an odd choice um but overall i like this movie i think it's entertaining i think it's intense and it is pretty horrifying so i think you should either check it out or give it another watch for sure yeah yep all right, all right. there we go okay so that's sunshine sunshine as done by the saturday night freak show podcast next <laughs> week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by michaela what <laughs> Next week, you know, I'm going to get really monosyllabic. Okay. I'm just going to shout, uh, <laughs> what? Ah, what? Oh, well, you know, I like a killer video game movie. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, oh, do you? You know, oh, if you kill in the game, uh, you might kill for system? real. Wait, that, We're going to no. watch Brain Scan from. Oh, <laughs> finally! Ooh, all right, good. <laughs> yeah. Bringing the trickster long, yeah. to yeah. The that fucking poster yes. haunts me. Yes. <laughs> I've seen that poster so fucking much. Wait, all have right. you guys seen this? I have not seen it. Oh, you have not. I have not seen this. Okay. All right, so brain scan to it. the yeah. classic uh, next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until.